Review of the Hubson H501S with the range mod. So, if we're going to start off slim, I'm going to show you the remote. Well, we'll start off firstly. So, if we put that over to a side for now, we can focus on the actual remote control. So, I've done the range mod and I have actually stuck um, stickers to remember which areas are rich, but I already know off by heart what they are. But the range mod is something I'd always recommend doing because it's literally a free upgrade that literally just unlocks it. I mean, it's not free, obviously because the parts are just £10, but literally, I'd recommend it because you can just unscrew them just like this, and then it's back to the normal state, basically, and then you just screw it on when you want to use it again, and it literally goes back to being boost range. Literally, so this range mod has literally given me about 200 extra metres range, and it really does help, so let's go over the transmitter. Um, without talking about too much about the range mod, so you can see the finish on the remote is like plastic. Um, it does feel really solid, um, but it has got that like plastic noise to it. Um, but it has got a really nice pattern. It's n it's comfortable when like flying around on. Uh, the grips are sticky. They're not too hard to press, and obviously they're like pull back six, so they'll always go back to the middle because the throttle's like digital. So if we turn on the remote. <laughs> you will see the screen go like this and that's where you can see all your information and obviously it's not connected to the drone so all you can see is the basic details I mean there is a lot of like backlight leakage but that's just expected as you can see there um, I mean the camera does make it look worse but it just depends on all the ways that you're looking at it um, so obviously on the remote you've got your GPS mode, GPS hold, altitude hold mode and then return off, return on then you have your photo button that takes a photo and then um, your video button that will take a video um, and then if you do want to like um, I'll turn that off now so I don't want to damage anything but if you want to rebind it to the plane turn you basically hold the photo button turn on and that will rebind it to the plane um, or the quadcopter but the remote calls it a plane so then you hold this bottom button here you see that one there if you hold that down, that will cycle through LED mode, so it will go off, and then it will go on blinking, and then it will go full on that I'd recommend at night time, because it actually helps you fly up much better in the night. And then these are just like uh, throttle trim adjustments, and then push this stick in, that's headless mode, push this stick in, no sorry, um, yeah, this one's headless mode, and then this one's follow me mode, the follow me mode is in the development, um, and it does need a lot of work to it, but... It's a it's a good concept, and then if you want to get into the menu, you I think you hold down, push down that stick to minimum, and then hold that button in. That'll take you into the menu. So that's from the remote. The screen's big enough; you can see what you're doing. It's really helpful. It tells you all the numbers inside there. Um, and let's get onto the quadcopter. So here we are with the drone. It's got this like wonderful like gold finish to it. It looks really really good to be honest. Um, and I really like it to be honest. Um, it's got a camera that's like quite good in night. Like if you want to use FPV, it's really good at night time, um, but not necessarily quality. But you can still see where you're going. So it's got its motors. These are quite. These are like decently powerful. They're nothing too amazing, but they they can really do a good job of like supporting the weight of the quadcopter and make it go nice and quickly. Uh, and you got the LED feet. The front ones are either bright pink or green I think and the back ones are either red um, or like blue because um, it all changes colour corresponding to like which mode that you're basically um, in on the quadcopter now the quadcopter has got like a really good like weight to it when it's got the battery in obviously the battery does go in the back compartment here slides in there with all the PCB and stuff and the battery is as you can see right there um, so I'll put that to a side for now, and you can obviously see all the circuitry. It uses one of these connectors, I forgot what it's called now, but you obviously just click this bay up, and that will how, that's how it goes. On the bottom, you've got some air vents, and you've got your micro SD card slot, where you can put your micro SD card. Um, and then there's little holes for like the ESCs to cool them down on the top and the bottom. Now, as you can see, it, it's got like this really nice feel to it. I don't know, it just... You look at the pictures and it does, I mean, <laughs> pictures just do not do this quadcopter justice because in real life it looks so much better. And the motors, just the motors stand out really, really, really well like when you get it. Like they're super, super like bright, shiny gold. 
almost like they're polished and it just looks amazing and it's got a really sturdy strong feel to it as well which i really really like um i mean the quadcopter is a decent size as you can see the comparison to my hand um and the quadcopter for me in in about where i live if i'm flying it out my window or anything i can get up to about 200 meters plus range um, maximum I'd say about 300 meters range in the residential area but when you go to a field that range can easily exceed that um, and the height is really good I managed to get up to about 200 meters plus in the air I'd say the maximum meet height that I probably got it to was like 300 or 250 um, to the point where it was basically like almost through the clouds but I have yet to test out um, exactly the the height on it so the charger for this thing i'll go get it. so i've got it <laughs> sorry uh you get a plug obviously depending on where you live i'm in uh uk so you get a uk plug very basic i think it's a dc or ac um end to it it's an ac um i'm not you could probably just use a different adapter but it's just um if you get the right connector on there um and then you get the balance charger that tells you when the battery is basically charged um I'm colour blind, so it's not much use of me telling you that much. But they it just goes. They both kind of go green when it's finished, um, and it's easily it's easily distinguishable because um, it's kind of like red, and then it goes green. It's like a really clear way of seeing it's green. And then obviously it's got the air vent holes, uh, and that's where they plug the battery in. So when you want to charge it, you basically yeah. So you get your cord. Um, and then you'll plug this into the wall, so pretend that's going into the wall. Then this AC end goes into the balance charger like that. Obviously you'll have your LEDs come on and then the white end to the battery kind of plugs into there like that. It takes about an hour and a half to charge or an hour and ten minutes depending on how long you flew it for. Um, and it has got decent battery lifetime, I'd say about ten 15 minutes depending on how you're flying it like if you're going quick and stuff it all depends on um, factors like that so the paperwork it comes with obviously you get your disclaimer which you probably don't care about um, and then the main manual this manual is actually super super helpful it basically tells you everything you need to know about your charging I mean obviously you don't know if you've never flown a quad before, then it does tell you how to fly that. But the settings I find most useful are ones like this here that kind of tell you what the display does. Um, so just imagine that's like the mirror image of the display. Um, and all of that basically just tells you what the display is telling you. Like that. Um, and I'd say the most useful part is like it's like towards the back kind of thing. I mean... Yeah, it does give you a schematic of the parts and stuff, but the most ho helpful part for me is stuff like this, like um, horizontal calibration, um, rotation calibration, and then there's compass calibration, um, and then other modes like that, and they're like the most useful parts. I mean, obviously putting batteries in, it's not particularly hard, but some, I'd recommend like keeping this, I'd recommend just keeping this manual because it's really helpful, um, and... It just tells you basically everything about the quadcopter that you need to know. And I think I've gone over the rest because you've got the disclaimer, this, and then you have a couple of other things. And then, yeah, so these are the two that it comes with. I just got mixed up. But yeah, it's a really good quadcopter. Um, and yeah, you can plug in your video goggles. Uh, the remote's kind of light. And then it takes four AAA batteries. Um, I'd recommend like you need to buy a battery charger for them um, and what I like to do if I get out now I have a separate battery charger here which I use so it's got two two like that so that'll charge while I'm actually using these four and then by the time that this battery has recharged these batteries are like full charge anyway but you don't need to swap these you only need to swap these batteries every about 10 flights or so because they they last pretty decent, but if you don't get rechargeable ones, I think you'll find yourself spending a lot of money on like normal alkaline batteries or whatever you want to call them, disposable ones. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. That's just a quick review on my opinions. Um, obviously, I've not really included many specs of it. This is just 
what it is and what it does but thanks for watching and i hope you find this useful